Are you ready, Justin? Ready. Don't sound so excited. I'm, I'm not. Okay, here we go. All right, gonna get in here. In five, four, three, two. Today we're gonna take a look at some eye anatomy. Now often we think of the eyes as very delicate structures. However, the outer portion of the eye is made up of some extremely tough tissue. Jonathan, so, you should just go ahead and tell them why they're here today. So I may have had a professor teach the outer portion of the eye, talked about how tough it was to the point that eyes would actually bounce. He has talked about this for years now. So this is a pretty big day for Jonathan. But don't let him fool you. He's totally curious and excited to see if the eyeballs actually okay, bounce. Okay, I admit, you know, you've talked about it enough that my curiosity is peaked. So we're gonna do that. And we did pick up some cow eyes because they were going to be thrown away. So we decided we'd save them in the name of science and education. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is just take a look at some anatomy and I guess bounce some eyeballs. Yep, so let's do this. Let's do this. So let's go over some basic anatomy of the eye before we get to our little experiment. The eye can be broken down into three layers or in other words, three tunics. The outer layer is known as the fibrous tunic. Then the middle layer, we refer to it as the vascular tunic. And then the inner layer is known as the retina, or you could think of it as the inner tunic. We're going to focus on that outer fibrous tunic because that's going to give the eye all of its strength, especially for our experiment coming up. So let's take a look at the cow eye here. And there are going to be obviously some similarities between human and cow eyes here. And let's take a look at the fibrous tunic because that's all we can see with this particular dissection or cow eye. The white part, which we're all familiar with the white, part of our eyes, this is called the sclera. The sclera of the eye ends here at the junction where you start seeing the cornea here. Now, both the sclera and the cornea are both made of a dense connective tissue, a dense connective tissue that creates all this strength for the outer portion of the eye. Now, granted, this has to be transparent, the cornea, compared to the actual sclera, so light can be refracted through this, but both of these structures are actually relatively strong as far as its ability to resist tension and also the pressure inside the eye. Now I'm squeezing on this eye pretty hard here and inside there's going to be a fluid or a gel-like fluid called the vitreous body. And part of the job of this outer portion of the eye is to maintain the shape of the eye and deal with those intraocular pressures. Now we're gonna do something a little different and put outside or we could call it extraocular pressure on these eyeballs to see how much they can withstand. But one other thing before we do our experiment that I wanna show you that's really cool here. If I reflect some of this tissue away here, one of the other functions of the actual sclera or the white part of the eye is to allow for the extraocular muscles to connect here. So this is one of the eye muscles or a muscle outside of the eye that actually will move the eye. And that kind of makes sense. So your white part of your eye has all these little skeletal muscles attaching to it. So you can slide your eye to look outward, to look inward, to look up, to look down, and even some rotary eye muscles that are pretty awesome. But we again wanna know how strong this thing really is. How much can it withstand? So with that being said, let's go to the experiment. We are now to the testing portion of our video. It is time to suit up. <sighs> the irony. Oh, really? What? Protect the eyes from the eyes. It makes sense. <laughs> All right, let's do test number one. Let's do this. About five feet here. Okay. Let's go here. All right. I'm a little nervous. This is like 15 years in the making for me here. Well, you better make this good then. Does it splat or does it bounce? Here we go. Huh. I mean, it bounced. Yeah. Didn't splat. Didn't splat. It's dense. We need to go higher. We definitely need to go higher. I'm going on the table here. All right, that works. Are you focused? Dude, don't even think about it. Okay. Science, <sighs> what is it all for? <laughs> I mean, it got a little higher. Yeah. And it doesn't break or splat like people might think. I think strong. We can still go bigger. We need to go bigger. Stairwell? Stairwell. Let's do it. Let's do it. This is gonna be the most epic eye drop of all time.
Hell yeah. Four stories up. You really think you're gonna be able to fit it through there? Yeah, of course I can. I'll believe it when I see it. I've got this. All right. I think we should even do it from the, the fifth floor. We should probably start with the second <laughs> floor first. Okay, we'll start smaller, work our way up to the fifth floor. So, let's do it. So we are on the second floor of our building, prepared to do our first test in the stairwell. And I have five eyeballs here because Justin doesn't trust me to do it on the first try. I have a little faith in you, but uh, very, very little. I'm gonna do it on the first try, first try. You in position, Justin? Yep, I'm ready to go. All right, in five. Four, three, woo! A little early there. <laughs> I got like, I got like two and a half, maybe three feet. Is the something. eyeball intact? Yeah, dude, that thing's tough. We're on the fifth floor here. It's quite a narrow pass to make it down through five stories but I can do this. We recovered the fifth eyeball, so I've got five shots to do this. Are you ready, Justin? Ready. Don't sound so excited. I'm, I'm not. Okay, here we go. All right, can you get in here? In five, four, three, two. Dang it, it was almost there. Okay, here we go. Eyeball number two. Ready the landing pad. And five, four, three. I'll just drop this. Ah! <laughs> it's almost there. Here we go. I did it. <laughs> we did it. How high did it bounce? It's still intact? Yep. And so there you have it. We were finally able to curb my curiosity from when I was told as a student years ago that eyes actually bounce. And clearly from our experiment, they do bounce. However, we know that's not a real life example, at least not exactly. We know our eyes just aren't falling out of our head, down a five-story building, bouncing off the ground, us picking them up, dusting them off, and plopping them back in like it's no big deal. That's just not happening. However, are there situations or real life scenarios where the eye might actually be exposed to tremendous amounts of external forces? Have you ever seen someone get hit in the eye with a baseball or other forms of external trauma to this area? In those cases, those are real life situations where we are very excited that we have this outer tough layer of the eye that we refer to as the fibrous tunic, specifically mostly made up of the white part of the eye that we call the sclera and therefore providing protection for those more delicate structures inside like the retina and the lens. Not only that, we also further protect the eye with plopping it in a skull, specifically what we refer to as the eye socket, at least most of us refer to it as the eye socket, but in the land of anatomica, we call this the orbit. Now the eye is recessed or placed into this orbit to the point where five sixths of the eye, the majority of the eye, is surrounded by bone. That means only the anterior one sixth of the eye is actually exposed. So now we've got bone, we've got the sclera, protecting all of those delicate internal structures from all these real life external forces that hopefully most of us don't have to deal with. Now there's one last thing I wanna mention and that's regarding the sensitivity of the eye. Up to this point, we've been talking about blunt force trauma or things like say the baseball hitting the eye would create this compressive force on the eye or kind of smoosh the eye. That's different than 
cutting or shearing or scratching forces that somebody might experience on the front of the eye. If you ask anybody who's had an abrasion of the cornea right here, they will tell you it hurts and it's very sensitive. And we all know that when things get stuck in our eye, we're, we react to that. It's very sensitive. So you kind of have to separate those two forces, this compressive kind of blunt force trauma versus how sensitive the eye is to other things like cutting and shearing and scratching. And that's why we definitely recommend using certified eye protection whenever you're using or doing scientific experiments or using heavy machinery, or apparently when you're lecturing with no surrounding risk at all. Thanks for watching everyone. At the beginning of the video, you may have noticed a little bit of a three-dimensional eyeball moving around twitching that we use as a visual aid. That was from one of our software affiliates called Share Care U. They have this awesome software program where you can see three-dimensional anatomy, rotate things around, and even information and articles that you can learn from to learn about the health and wellness of the human body. We'll put our link in the description. They give anybody a discount who purchases through that link. So go ahead and check that out if you want. It'll help support our channel as well as give you a really cool software program. Also like and subscribe, comment below. Let us know what other types of eye videos you wanna see because we're gonna do more of those. And until next time, protect those eyeballs. Thank you.